Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. In today's video, I'm going to be summoning on the Gala Dragalia Remix featuring Incognito Nefaria. I'm very excited to try summon Nefaria because I think her relationship and friendship with Nadine is just super wholesome. I love their interactions, I feel like they are an awesome pair. And it's much the same way I felt way back toward the beginning of the game about the friendship between Melsa and Cerise. So I've created a team here to bring us good luck in today's summoning. This is of course Team Flames of Friendship. I've got Nadine here, she's all fully built out, with my friendship related worm prints of course, me and my bestie being an iconic print showcasing Nefaria and Nadine and the great bond that they share. I've also got very lovable friends on Nadine, and Cerise makes an appearance featuring her friendship-related print, Better Together, as well as Forest Bonds, obviously symbolic of her bonds with Melsa. Melsa, in turn, has Twinfold Bonds, of course, correspondingly, and Best Buds. And Xander here in his Dragon Yule outfit is, uh, well, really more of a vassal for Nefaria. He's here to just hold on to her wand, which I worked on preparing yesterday and today. It is a tier 2 Akito wand that I basically built from scratch in anticipation of us summoning Nefaria. So I've done all the prep work I can. Xander here even has some friendship related prints, Memory of a Friend and Mega Friends. Shout out to Plunder Pals and Secret Friend. I couldn't fit them on this team, but those were uh, my next choices. But yeah, he's here as the vassal. He's just holding onto the wand. That is the slot that Nefaria is going to go into if she makes it onto this team. And let us hope that we are able to summon her today. I really went all out. I maxed out my Flame Draculith, which was my last facility in my Halidom. I am here for this. I think we're prepared to go all in. But uh, we may have to do this in two parts if our Wormite gets too low. Like, I think if we get to about 15k Wormite or so, we might have to reevaluate our life choices and decide whether we really want to go through with this or wait until... Basically wait until the anniversary, which is just a couple weeks away. So let's talk about what could be a good thing to summon here. I think that's a nice way to check in since I don't show off my collection all that often, so this will give you a sense of, besides Nefaria, who is our primary target, what else might be good for us here. So in the flame element, I don't have Chelsea, so Chelsea would be a nice pickup. In the water element, Let's see. I do have Elisan, which is kind of unfortunate considering she's on focus. And uh, yeah, it looks like I have everything in the water element. So water is not going to be great for us this time around. For wind, you'll notice Galaranzel happens to make a random appearance here, but uh, I do have him. Otherwise, in wind, I don't have Summer Sinoa, so she would be a nice pickup in wind. And in light, I'm missing Zubajie, so he would be an awesome pickup. I'm also missing Summer Mikoto. And I will say about Summer Mikoto, this is the one summon I might get that would lead me to stop summoning before getting Nefaria. Basically because I want to limit my targets as far as dream summons to exactly one character I really want. And right now, that was Summer Mikoto. But if I happen to pull Summer Mikoto and then I could Dream Summon Incognito Nefaria, that also works out well for me. So if I do pull Mikoto, I might also stop pulling a little bit early. For Shadow, I think that we have everyone. Yep, we have... Oh no, we're missing Forte. Forgot. So she could be a nice pickup for us. And uh, I wouldn't mind picking up some Horuses along the way because he does seem to be a really good dragon for Nefaria. So if we happen to get her... It would be nice to get as many copies of Horus as we can. Otherwise, when it comes to the dragons, I mean, there are some that I'm missing, but I mainly want them for sunlight or not really for um, any other purpose because I can't really afford to unbind anything right now. But let's see. Technically, I am missing Tie Shan Gong Shu, so that's one of them. I'm missing Andromeda and Azazel, and now Ramiel also. So any of those would be pretty awesome to pick up. Let's go ahead and get started with our summoning, beginning with our single summons. This time we have enough singles that I think... Well, hmm. Let's go ahead and do one with all ten and then we'll see where we go from there. I mean, if we happen to get Nefaria and want to stop, 
that's just really fantastic luck anyway, so I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of equity on that by maybe doing some extra summons that weren't needed. And we are getting a 5 star, which is awesome off the bat. Maybe we'll see that wand, and we can save some of our resources for the anniversary. It's the last one in the circle. Okay, it's a dragon. I would like to see Horus here, not gonna lie. Um, if we have to do a lot of summoning to pick up Nefaria, I hope that Horus is something we're seeing pretty frequently. Just because uh, I would like to try out Horus. And, uh, what's it gonna be? Oh, it's a Nidhogg. That's really a shame. Nidhogg is part of the Draconic Essences now, and I do have a maxed out Nidhogg, so this doesn't really help me whatsoever. That being said, Nidhogg, I mean, he's a sweet looking dragon. He's pretty good if you don't have Azazel for healers like Grace. And uh, fun fact, I believe Nidhogg is the first ever five star I summoned. So um, I think that I got him, he was on focus on the very first banner in the game. And uh, I believe I got him before the other five stars I got off of that, which were Eslith and the Wormprint at the time. Give me your wounded. We're going to go ahead and go in with another tenor. Um, might be a little risky, but I believe since we saw Nidhogg at the end there, that means that we had increased our pity rate, uh, or not increased our pity rate and not had any leftovers. Like, he was the tenth summon out of the ten, so our pity rate would be back to default. All right, no five stars in this circle, so we'll go ahead and skip that one. Let's check our appearance rate to confirm. Yep, it's only gone up one time, which is kind of where we expect it to be. So now that it has gone up and we're a little lower on singles, we'll do our singles individually in case we break our pity in the middle. And if we see no indication that it's at least a four star, I'm going to skip. So we can kind of move along through these. The indications on here, I really don't know exactly what all they mean, but basically if you see some doves flying about, it means you at least got a four star. If you see a rainbow uh, or a Fafnir or this circle becomes a rainbow, it means you got a five star. And sometimes you can get a four star that lands as a four star and transforms into a five star when it landed. There you saw that one dove, so this is at least a four star, so let's check it out. And uh, it's just a four star lance didn't transform. It's Pia. I would like to see Pia get a Mana Spiral. Uh, she's kind of a really sweet and precious character, but unfortunately she just hasn't really stood the test of time. Even when she came out, she really struggled a lot. Alright, Emma. I still am not sure how, uh, how Horus will shake out on characters like Emma. It doesn't seem outside the realm of possibility to me that uh, Horus could be preferred. But particularly if you're not relying upon your dragon transformation. I guess it's also not unreasonable that maybe some players out there just put like Popstar Siren on Emma or something and just use Emma purely for team buffing, including the dragon that she's equipped with. But uh, I haven't really seen her getting used very much lately. Alright, more three stars. And I think when we get down to six, we'll have increased our pity rate. So that's what we're looking out for. We'll skip along. So I believe this should be our last single summon before we start doing some tenfolds. And uh, the Wormite is not looking as good for us as uh, it may have looked in the past. So I did my Galathor summoning, which I posted. I think I had about 50k at the end of that. And then... Off camera, I did some additional summoning because I saw people using Ramiel helpers and was like, I really want to try to pick up at least one Ramiel because maybe he'll be able to be unbound with essences. In the end, I wasn't able to get a Ramiel, but I spent, I guess, about 6k uh, Wormite or maybe 5k, and I've just accumulated some more since then. And uh, I did get enough copies of Thor to unbind Thor, which was awesome, using my two Sunlight Stones I had. And I also ended up getting a Nevin. So basically, that was kind of the point where I decided to call it. I was like, I don't want to go below 40k, that's just too low. I happened to get Nevin, pin it on, my Thor is completed. Like, Ramiel isn't that important to me, as cool as it is to use Ramiel for solos and as on your helper and whatnot. So that's why my stash is a little bit lower than it was previously. 
And um, not gonna lie, I'm kind of worried. I've seen some people spend 100k and just get one Nefaria, Nefaria, Nefaria. Uh, so yeah, it could go badly for us here. I mean, there's a real possibility that we uh, we go into the red on this. First 10 fold out, no five star, unless we get a sneak attack from the final thing in this circle and it becomes a five star. We did not, oh man, and it was a wand too. That would have been glorious to see that transform into a five star wand and be Nefaria. So I'm used to calling Nefaria Nefaria. That's just how I always pronounce her name in my mind. But, uh, oh. I didn't even get to see the banner, I accidentally tapped the screen. Well anyway, whatever she's called, I hope that she shows up here. I guess we could call her Rhea. Let's see Rhea. Nadine is waiting for you, Rhea. Let's go! Yes! This is awesome! Okay, we have so many resources left for the anniversary! This is the best of all worlds! I mean, we could go for Horus, but nah, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. I feel like this is a mission accomplished right here. I guess that's the only five star we got on the circle and we have to skip it when it's uh, popped up into the air. Wow, okay, super lucky. Yeah, I don't think I want to tempt fate. Horus, I just wonder if Horus is like super necessary to make her work, you know? To where we would even want one Horus just for future proofing. She seems awesome. I was wrong, I think, on her ability actually. So I think that you can get up to three stacks of the critical damage boost on her ability. But uh, you still just want to have a lot of critical rate on her so you can actually take advantage of that. And Horus seems like an excellent way to make that happen. And I believe Horus also helps with her casting time on her second skill thanks to the attack rate. Let's see what Nefaria has to say about things. To think Nadine was able to wield her magical device in order to recreate such otherworldly have been a mobs. <laughs> okay. The land I once ruled used highly advanced magics, hence my skill with mana. And she called well, I always say Nadine, but she said Nadine. To think Nadine was able to we wish Nadine had not such interest in taking my photograph oh well we're all glad that she has fervent interest in taking it because they are the best pair okay we did it i mean horus eh i think that we've i think that we've accomplished enough let's save the rest for the anniversary if nothing else we can wait until the end of this and see what banner is coming up next and decide if we really want to dip in for horus but uh i suppose for now i'll just use a Golomar's Nefaria. Critical hit equals critical damage too. Not going to be as useful, but uh, one positive I have heard mentioned is the multi-hit element on her attack. I think it's Girl's Night Out. So when you're doing a lot of frequent hits, then having a, a small chance to land a critical hit, you're overall landing more critical hits. So I mean, you're going to be activating this with with greater ease but the thing is your overall frequency of critical hits is going to be sort of the same like an expectation so what i'm saying is by doing a lot of attacks you can land a larger number of critical hits even if the expected value of your damage is going to be the same but by landing any critical hits your critical damage modifier goes up so anyway i think it plays to her benefit that she has multi-hit mechanics basically um, somebody pointed out in the comments, and I think that's a, that's a good point. But uh, yeah, I haven't even gotten to test her out or play with her uh, at all. I only have a couple of weapons left to grind out from uh, Volk's Wrath and none from Heimitgard Swarmer, so I might actually try collect those using her now. Let's uh, remove our vassal here and put Nefaria on the team. So she still has to be upgraded and whatnot. But... Uh, We'll give her Mars for now. She can uh, use Mars just like Nadine can, or Nadine, so that's nice. I think she'd want to use something like Candy Couriers and probably... Oh, but it's such a shame. How can I not use this on her, right? But I think I need to get some extra critical rate on her as well. 
So I was going to say Primal Crisis is a good source for a decent amount of critical rates along with Flurry Strength. If you don't have that, uh, Breakfast at Valerio's is another popular worm print in a similar vein. Ooh, or maybe, wait, this is critical damage, I think. Well, some amount of critical rate, and then every time you get defensive buffs, you get extra critical damage. That type of thing could scale really nicely with Horus, but we don't have Horus. Hmm, I guess for now, in order to complete the Flames of Friendship team, I've got to give her... I've got to give her this, and uh, I guess Candy Couriers isn't the most uh, friendship-oriented worm print either, so let's see what else we can equip her with that would be more appropriate. Hmm, what do we have here? I guess we'll give her Mega Friends. We had it used on Xander, and um, yeah, it's fine. I mean, she doesn't really have any 4-strike stuff, so obviously I'm not going to keep that on her, but uh, I think this looks pretty good. There looks to be a lot of friendship happening. I think that everybody feels very comfortable here. This seems to be a very wholesome and uh, exciting crew that's about to go out on an adventure. And I myself am about to embark on an adventure because I have not yet checked out the actual story of the event. And I'm really excited to do that. I'll probably post a video with my impressions on the event and maybe some gameplay of it in the next couple of days. I think it's going to pretty much stay the same for the rest of the event, so I'm not really in a rush to, uh, to do that. After that, we have the Fractured Futures rerun, and then we're right around the corner from the game's second anniversary. So I hope that if you summoned on this, you, uh, you got everything that your heart desired. Let me know how it went in the comments below. Let me know what you think about uh, Nefaria, if you actually got her and have gotten to try her out. I'd be very curious to hear what you have to say. Otherwise, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.